Hey everyone, Fatima here from the Mox Learning and Development team. In this video, I'll be showing you how to navigate the new Passport. Now, you're probably wondering who or what is the Mox? Well, Mox stands for the Mayor's Office of Contract Services, and we are an oversight agency as well as a service agency, and we strive to balance those two things. We spend a lot of time supporting agencies to help get them what they need efficiently. One of the ways we do that is with an online system called Passport, the procurement system for the city of New York. Now, vendors come into Passport Agencies find vendors in Passport and they also issue solicitations for work through Passport. So baby, Passport, this really is the place to be. Transparency is also very important. So we do a lot of work here at MOX with data, especially now that all of our procurement work is done within Passport. We wanna make sure that folks know what the city is buying and what opportunities are out there. Transparency is a part of how we do that. And finally, we partner with vendors. We want to make sure that people understand how to use this system and how to engage with city agencies to sell their goods or services. That's why you're watching this video today, because leveraging our data to drive continuous quality improvement is a big part of who we are. And that is MOX, or the Mayor's Office of Contract Services. Welcome to the new Passport. Passport has always been about making the contract process easier and more transparent. In the newest release, we've introduced changes that make Passport easier to see with larger icons and accessibility features, easier to use with streamlined processes and more options for personalization, and last but certainly not least, easier to get paid with increased financial capabilities. So I'm going to walk you through some of those changes and the first one is going to be the visual changes. In the new Passport, you can change the contrast settings. There's an accessibility icon in the upper right corner of every screen. When you click on this icon, you will then see the contrast settings window where you can change from the default view to a high contrast view. This helps you to make your passport viewing more comfortable and more accessible. The passport homepage is mostly the same. So things should be familiar to those of you who have used Passport before. The page is still modular, so the different sections will shift around based on your screen or window size. However, the widgets are now in blue with bold text, making the widget labels easier to see. In general, the fonts in the new Passport are larger and clearer. Well, what about alerts? Previously, the alert window was displayed in specific tabs with red blocking alerts and yellow non-blocking alerts. In the new Passport, the alert window can be seen in every screen until the alerts are addressed and that window is lightly shaded yellow. The new Passport has also taken a different approach to signaling required information. Now, required information was highlighted with vertical red lines on the fields in the old version of Passport, but now the vertical red line that showed users required information has been replaced with an asterisk next to the field label. This change also makes Passport more accessible for those who use screen readers. Attempting to move on without filling in required information will trigger a notification box that lists the needed information. Kind of cool. Passport will still use icons and symbols to help users track their progress as they complete tasks. In the new Passport, the icons are larger and simpler with more color. I love it. So vivid. Previously in Passport, the left navigation menu was how you went to different sections of a module. The menu was hidden by default and users had to click a thumbtack icon to leave it open as they worked. 
Well, as you can see in the new passport, the left navigation menu is open by default and requires users to click the double arrows to close it. You can also know which section you are currently working in with easier to see label color changes. Some of the smaller windows also have left navigation menus within, but these are closed by default. You will have to click on the double arrows to open them. So we talked about things that are easier to see. What about easier to use? Well, the changes in Passport are not just for appearances sake. The changes are also meant to make the experience of using Passport easier and more logical. For example, searching within Passport often required users to click on ellipses, you know, those three little dots, to reveal further options. Well, in the new Passport, search experience just got more streamlined. We've changed the ellipses menus into drop downs. Let's take a look at how this functions in the system. As you can see, more information is shown up front so that it's easier to find the information that you need. And as you can see, we're searching for some RFX within the browse public RFX section of Passport. But it's also easier to see and adjust those filters. So I've just removed a filter just like that. How cool. Speaking of easier, entering addresses will be easier and more accurate. The new Passport has a Google Maps integration that lets you select the street address as you enter information. I know you want to see it, so let me just start that video for you. Here we go. The integration auto populates the city, country, state, and zip code based on whatever street address you enter or select. So you're going to spend less time entering information and who doesn't like spending less time doing that? In the previous version of Passport, you could change the appearance of tables by right clicking on a column header. This would allow you to change and rearrange columns. You still have all of those capabilities in the new Passport, but they're now easier to access and it's even easier to customize table appearances. I'm, I'm probably probably the most excited about this one, y'all. So you're just going to use the gear icon at the bottom of the table. Remember what this icon looks like. This will open the grid settings window. You can then toggle the columns you need to see and freeze headers so that you know what information you're seeing, even if you keep scrolling down. Oh, so excited. You can also download the table as an Excel file if you wish. Enough excitement for me. Let's have you look at it. So as you can see here, I am just going on that grid icon. I'm rearranging so that the remaining time on the RFX is moved up. I'm going to hide the editing column. I'm also going to hide the program column. And then I'm going to select frizz, or excuse me, freeze grid header. This is kind of like the freeze top row functionality in Excel. So it makes it so that the header of the table can be seen no matter how you scroll. Oh, I love that. All right. Once you find a contracting opportunity called an RFX in Passport and you plan to respond to it, you must first acknowledge receipt of the RFX. Now, previously, there was an acknowledgement tab that allowed you to click on a button that says, I acknowledge receipt of this. Well, in the example shown on your screen, the button says, I acknowledge receipt of this RFP. Keep in mind that the last term on that I acknowledge receipt of this button might change depending on the type of RFX that you're responding to. In the new Passport, there's an acknowledgement window that is moved out of its own tab. Okay, The acknowledgement button will appear at the top of multiple screens in the RFX until you click the button. So once again, in that new Passport, the acknowledgement window has moved out of the tab and it's now going to be a button that appears at the top of multiple screens in the RFX. So we've talked about how Passport is 
easier to see it's easier to use and now you're like but please show me the money how is it easier to get paid okay the new passport also lets vendors do more to manage their financial tasks currently financial tasks and passport include things like submitting an invoice and submitting budget modifications well the new passport allows you to do those same things and a little more did you make a mistake in your invoice it's now easier to correct by submitting an invoice deduction have a health and human services contract you can now submit advance requests in passport resources and guides are available to help you with these new functionalities now to prepare for this newest release here's what we recommend we want you to stay informed about passport changes so we've created a brand new page called the passport new release page to access it go over to nyc.gov passport and click on the button at the top menu that says passport new release this page contains a summary of all of the new passport features and there's even a section called latest released news and in this section, you can sign up to receive Mock's email correspondence and see any news that you may have missed along the new release journey. We didn't forget about those of you with HHS contracts. Don't you worry. As you've probably heard by now, tasks done in HHS Accelerator will soon be moving to Passport. They haven't moved yet, but they are, which means you will have one system to do it all. We've encouraged agencies to complete any outstanding contract tasks so that everyone is fully ready to use Passport once HHS Accelerator is fully decommissioned. Each agency has a specific date in which they will migrate from HHS Accelerator and into Passport. Our goal here is to make things as smooth and as seamless as possible. Migration begins in January and continues into the spring. But if you are wondering when you will have to use Passport for your HHS Accelerator tasks, contact your contracting agency. So now we've reached the resources part of the video where I share with you additional resources that you can use to get help and navigate Passport. If you're just getting started or you're not really sure what you should do next, follow the contracting roadmap. Now, this isn't just a pretty picture, folks. It's our new interactive tool that you can find over at nyc.gov slash contracting roadmap. And each tile in the path is clickable. For example, clicking on the get ready to do business part of the path will show you several relevant resources and suggest your next best step. For all things passport related, please visit nyc.gov slash passport first. We'll be adding guides uh, with the new features and then gradually we're going to be updating those existing guides. So we appreciate your patience as we take on this gargantuan task. Once you're on nyc.gov slash passport, you can access our learning to use passport page by clicking on the learn passport link in the header. On that page, we recommend scrolling down and clicking on the expand all button. There it is. And that will show you all of the relevant resources under the different sections. So much. Well, if you still have questions or you need help navigating Passport, you know what I'm going to tell you to do? Check out our Mox Help page by visiting nyc.gov slash moxhelp. To submit an inquiry to the Mox Service Desk, click the link on the bottom of that page. Clicking on the Service Desk link will take you to the Mox Support page where you can click on the Request Assistance link. There you will enter your organizational email address. So I'm going to do that. Here we go. The next thing you should do is tell us your name. We want to know who you are, right? So tell us your organization's name. 
And then tell us your first and last name. That would be very helpful. The next thing that I'm going to recommend you do is where it says, what is your inquiry related to? Select passport. And then on the field next to it, you're going to select the subcategory from the list that is most relevant to your issue or to your question. Maybe it's about RFX that it's closing within two business days. In the field that says question or issue summary, you're going to summarize your question or issue. So in this case, I'm going to write, you know, why is there an error on my RFX? There's another section here that says describe your concerns below. Now, we want you to give as many details as you possibly can. The more details you provide here, the better it will be for us to understand what your issue is and the easier it will be for us to help you. So as you can see, I'm just typing in what some of those issues may be. Many, many details here. And I'm being very specific <laughs> and detailed. Then I'm going to go ahead and click on that browse button and I will select screenshots because remember when you've done the description of your concerns, you're going to give those details and refer to your screenshots. Then you're going to add your screenshots in to your inquiry. We host several free trainings and events to help vendors do business with NYC. Just visit mmoxvendortraining.eventbrite.com. That website again is posted on the bottom of the screen, but it's mmoxvendortraining.eventbrite.com. And that's where you can learn more and register for any of our upcoming events. Why don't you even give us a follow so that you can stay up to date on our events? Now we have three types of training that are currently available for vendors. The first is getting started. This is our series of monthly webinars designed for new vendors who want to learn how to confidently navigate Passport and contract with New York City. Mox in Your Neighborhood is our series of in-person trainings and networking opportunities for vendors across NYC. And finally, Passport Vendor Financials. This is our series of webinars that show vendors currently contracting with the city how to use Passport to get paid. Well, before I love you and leave you, I do want to end this on a high note. I want to share with you some frequently asked questions that we've been receiving from vendors as we prepare for this new release. So here we go, first question. How do you access the new Passport? Do we need to create new usernames and passwords? Great question. Here's the answer. Your existing NICE ID and password still works in the new passport. Now, if you don't have a NICE ID, then please go over to the contracting roadmap and click on the first tile, getting started. Okay, next question. How would the merge between HHS Accelerator and Passport make the invoice process easier? Excellent question. Here's the answer. The merge means that there is a single portal to manage your procurement instead of two. Being able to submit invoice deductions and advance requests will help to streamline the invoice process. And our final question. How will the new Passport affect the way vendors can find contracting opportunities? Oh, I love this question. I'm going to get a little nerdy on you, so just hold tight. You will still be able to access contracting opportunities using the RFX tab in the top navigation menu within Passport. It gives you several options for finding opportunities. Clicking Browse My RFX Responses allows you to see non-public RFX to which your organization may have been invited. Going to Browse Public RFX lets you see public opportunities within the system. The enhanced search functionality that we talked about earlier makes it easier for you to narrow the choices down to the RFX that interest you the most. Well, folks, that's going to do it for our video today. We hope to see you in another live webinar in person event, or I guess we won't see you, but we hope you check out our next training video. Thanks so much.